What's up, everybody? Welcome to the NFL Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Michael Fabiano alongside the Fantasy Viper, fresh off of a week in the Bahamas, oh. looking tan, the hair looks great, Graham Barfield. It's good to be back, man. Yeah, good to be is back. it? Is it? Yeah, well, I mean, the last two days we got <laughs> rained out from fishing. Uh, okay. No good, but uh, the first two days were, were fantastic. But so, good what did, I mean, you just like chill out by the beach, yeah. like, just take in the sun. Yeah, we've got a family friend that's uh, that's lived down there for quite some time. Uh, we try and go visit them like once a year, but I've been so busy the last two to three years, I haven't had a yeah. chance. So that's it was awesome. nice to go see them. I haven't, I haven't seen them in quite some time. Yeah, spring break, i got to figure out where I'm going to take the family. We'll yeah. see what happens. Behind the glass, our pal, Eddie Murphy. What's up, bro? No, I'm just uh, you know excited to get uh, back into this uh, the groove of uh, just us three now for at least a month, right? Marcus yeah, Marcus is off until uh, until March. So yeah. we gotta we gotta hold the show on our backs, and you know we have we do have some stuff coming up though, combine and yeah. uh, uh, and free agency. So we'll have uh, a lot to get into. So yeah, should, no we, we should have enough football stuff. I know we have some other stuff planned too. So it should be a good month. Did you guys watch the Oscars last night? I did. did I did too. Yeah. I saw you tweeting about it. I, I watched I, every movie. I couldn't give a rat's ass about the Oscars. I watched every movie uh, for the first time. I think ever. I think I have watched like almost every nominated movie. Yes. So I, I had a I had a pretty good movie year. But so yeah, I felt uh, like a, the need to watch it since I did spend Star, a lot of time. Did Star watching. Wars win anything? Uh, not that I know. So not that I was pre- not uh, that nothing that was presented. Care. That was my one issue with it. Um, not enough award presentations. There was too many uh, like. Uh, musical acts and yeah, stuff. See, I and, oh, I wait, you weren't into Eminem? <laughs> I, I, it, Performing I mean, Lose Yourself? I guess I was alright with that because it was like a, a surprise, but yeah. I thought, you know, I want to see pe- people who put their lives work into certain movies and like right. the, do those you have to read on a, like a website and they get them during the day. You don't get to see them right. up there and give their speech. I think that's kind of cool. I and mean, like to take that away just to have more musical numbers. And again, it's not saying I don't want to see Eminem. I don't, not that I don't want to see Elton John perform like two of the all time greats, but it's, it's a movie ceremony. So it's like show the movies. Um, that was my one knock on it. The not enough of like the, uh, I guess the less or awards to like, what the Academy thinks, which is uh, kind of a shame. I was watching 90 Day Fiance. That's what I was doing. It's like, a, like, because these actors get political, and I don't want to hear them talk politics. Yeah. Like, shut up. Give your give your speech. I don't want to hear about your political views. Just like people don't tune into this podcast to hear political views, and I'm not going to give them anyways because people want to talk fantasy football. I just – it's that, that sours me. So you don't want to see – And I know – and I love Brad Pitt. I think he's a great actor, but I heard that he – did a little Joaquin Phoenix talked whatever. about the, the dangers of drinking milk. So yeah. that was that was a good one. Uh, yeah, he was kind of milk. Out. Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix is an interesting guy. Yeah, he's a very interesting isn't guy. he dating Rooney Mara? Yeah, who actually, is? I think they're married now. They're married. I think so. Now and and her sister she, is Kate Mara. Yes. Right, but their parents the is the Steelers Giants. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How about that? Talented family. Yeah. This it's, is great. See, I, the, the, milk. Why? What the hell's wrong with milk? I know he's a vegan. He's uh, he's but, what, but what's wrong with milk? Uh, you, it's, you, you have to watch the speech. It's terrible. Oh, but just from a health perspective, it's terrible for you. Yeah. Well, I okay. Well, that's good because I don't drink a lot of milk. But yeah, it's terrible. Wait. Yeah. It's terrible for you. Yeah. It, like for are, is it an old wives' tale that no, like you know no, you're hormones. supposed to give kids milk to yeah. calcium for their bones humans, to grow? Humans can't break down the hormones from cows. That's that's Ex- apparently the science behind and it. And also, excessive dairy consumption has definitely been linked to cancer. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So maybe Joaquin's on some much yeah, deserved uh, award too. Yeah, to Joaquin. Great movie. This past year was a great year for me. Oh, it's an awesome. This year. this past year was fantastic. I haven't seen Parasite yet. Parasite's awesome. Yeah, there, there, there are five I'm or six. Watch movies. Everyone's telling me to watch it, but it's like the subtitles. I I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. Wow. No, you. Like I guess you. You're you, not watching Narcos. Narcos has Narcos is like seventy. You forget there are Spanish. subtitles five minutes into it, and you yeah. just, you just really? lock, you all right. Lock maybe it. I'll watch it. I don't know. I couldn't get my girlfriend to watch. it. I don't think I have to do it myself. Um. All right. Enough about the Oscars. Let's get to the news. All right, this was an interesting little tidbit. Our pal Ian Rapport here uh, at NFL Media reported that all options are on the table between Todd Gurley and the Rams. So those options would include him coming back, him being released, or maybe him being traded. Uh, Gurley ended up the season strong. The Rams had a plan in place. They didn't run him real hard in the first half of the season, and in the second half of the season when they were racing to attempt to make the playoffs – they gave him the ball. He was pretty solid in fantasy terms. Uh, Graham, what's your take on this? I mean, if Gurley – I tell you one thing. If you have Daryl Henderson in a dynasty league, you are hoping that the Rams part ways, but is that going to happen? 
I look this contract pretty right. much precludes them from uh, from from dropping him. I mean, he's going to cost twenty five point six million a lot of dough. the cap this year. And granted, some of that can come back once they release him. But I mean, I, I don't see anybody trading for this contract. I don't see the Rams releasing him because they'd be eating a ton of money. Yeah. Um, I, I, really, they kind of put themselves into a no-win situation. They backed themselves into a corner, and now really they can't necessarily get out of his deal until maybe 2021, and even then they'd be eating some money. Yeah. So, to me, I think Gurley's going to end up staying with the Rams because just financially it doesn't yeah. make a whole lot of sense. I mean, and, and guys, he wasn't he wasn't terrible. And and I, and I, listen, I know people who know Todd, and those people were telling me that he was he, he didn't get why they wouldn't give him the football, you know, in the first half of the season. And so – He's going to end up being one of the bigger risk-reward uh, draft picks in fantasy again uh, in 2020. Moving on, uh, Cam Newton uh, still doing his rehab, trying to come back. Um, Panthers GM Marty Herney uh, would not answer questions about whether or not Cam would be back with the Panthers in 2020. And I don't see – where else are they going to go? Yeah. I, mean, right? I mean, Kyle Allen is not the answer, and he's I believe he's a restricted free agent. But – Cam's going to end up back in Carolina, right? Because what are the other options? You look at that. We're going to talk about the free agents uh, a little bit later on in the show, but I, I, the only guy I can really think that they would maybe try and go out and get is is Philip Rivers. Right. Other than that, I mean, it, it would be Cam, right? I, I'm with you on that. I, I think they'll probably try and figure something out. Cam's still only 30 years old. He's going to turn 31 this mm-hmm. offseason. He has one year left on his deal in 2020, but he's obviously going to be uh, pushing for a new deal. The Panthers could also save a ton of money against their cap by releasing him. Uh, I got to imagine it, if I were betting on this, I would bet that the Panthers have some sort of like really nice two-year extension for, for Cam to kind of give themselves a window to just mm-hmm. to see where his health is at. Yep. I mean, obviously he's coming off another foot injury, had the shoulder issue in 2018 as well. I, I think they'll get something figured out because I'm, you know, what else are they going to do? Right. What else? The, they the, I mean, the only thing I think of, I mean, you, you could you could draft a quarterback, obviously, or Rivers. You know, went to North Carolina State. So, but I mean, you're kicking that's, the can that's down two, the road there. Right. That's two years. Right. And I it, mean, it he would kinda, be a bridge to somebody else. Right. And it kind of seems like the Panthers, with their new, uh, their new owner, new GM, new staff, they're kind of in evaluation mode, and it almost seems like they they kind of are borderline on tank mode because that division is stacked. Yeah. Saints are going to be good again. The Falcons are always, you know, okay. The Bucks are always in play. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, to me, it, it just seems it seems like the Panthers are on an evaluate, evaluation mode, and, and I'm kind of with you. There really doesn't seem like – doesn't really seem like they have another option. Yeah. Uh, the Redskins are reportedly likely to exercise Adrian Peterson's option in 2020. Uh, Peterson, I mean, listen, based on his age, I mean, he's still running the ball pretty good. Guy's going to go to the Hall of Fame, I would think. And – you know, Darius Geis, my guy who I love, he'll be the starter going into 2020, but you can't ignore the fact that he has missed a lot of time due to injury. So no doubt. I still like Geis to be the guy there. I think that's obvious. But if Adrian Peterson is brought back, that could throw a little water uh, you know, on, on Geis' potential breakout. No doubt. Adrian, Adrian Peterson is like Frank Gore. He's just never going to retire. I know. And Gore, <laughs> Gore wants to keep playing, too. And he's, yeah. what, 36, 37? It's I mean, incredible. It's ridiculous. So uh, that Redskins backfield is is, is one to watch. It's definitely going to be another muddled backfield, especially if they bring back Peterson. They have all, they also have Bryce Love, who is on IR. They drafted yep. him in like the fifth, sixth round last yep. year. I liked him quite a bit coming out. Yep. Uh, obviously have no idea where his health is at right yeah. now. But Chris, Chris Thompson's uh, unrestricted. So. Yeah. I mean, they've They've got uh, another muddy backfield, it looks like, for the yep. Redskins going into 2020. Yep. Uh, Des Bryant. Apparently, uh, Cowboys Vice President Stephen Jones said that Des has texted him about a potential return to Big D. Uh, Bryant didn't play last year, coming off the Achilles. Uh, he's 31 years old. It's To me, it's shocking that no one kicked the tires on him last year. D- I mean, you've got – I mean, Amari's coming back, you would think. You've got Gallup. Uh, Dez going to the Cowboys? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, is Dez a Hall of Famer? No. No? No, I don't He's definitely that. a fantasy Hall of Famer. Though, I right? mean, I, he had some the, yeah, he had some seasons. huge seasons, man. Double-digit touchdown season. I think he had 16 one year. But no, no. The the resume is not yeah. enough, I don't think. I think he's I think he's probably a fantasy Hall of Famer just because those three – he had like three, four really three, he, dominant yeah. years yep. for fantasy. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, you're probably right. He's not a Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer. But. You know, if the referees got the got the call right on the catch that wasn't a catch that was a catch, 
you know, maybe things change. I'm rolling my eyes Super so Bowl. hard. We'll see what happens. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> Des Bryant uh, could, could be a guy in best ball if, if you want to take a chance. It's a, kind of the, a lesser sort of scenario as it, like an Antonio Bryant who is going to get drafted in best ball all over the place late because maybe he'll end up with the team. We'll see right. what happens. Uh, but Des could come back. In 2020, be interesting if he returns to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, last bit of news, Jalen Richard signs a two-year extension with the Las Vegas Raiders. Got to get that right. Because mm-hmm. I know a couple – I'm going to say Oakland a couple times, screwed up. Las Vegas hey. Raiders. Does this have any impact on Josh Jacobs' fantasy value? I'm still saying San Diego Chargers from time to time. <laughs> I, I haven't even gotten with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does. I mean, Jalen Richard is going to be a thorn in, in Jacobs' side again. And we saw, you know – in Jacobs' rookie season, he was fantastic on the mm-hmm. ground, led all running backs and missed tackles forced uh, per carry. But did, was you know we were kind of waiting for him to be more involved in the passing game. And now Jalen Richard will will theoretically be a thorn in Jacobs' side once again. Yep. Um, and for that reason, Fabs, I've seen Jacobs in just like really early rankings be pretty you know up there in the first yeah. round. And yep. I might be out of that price just because Richard is is going to steal a few receptions mm-hmm. every single game, and and maybe Gruden will will get it right this year and you know get Jacobs you know 50, 60 targets, and in that case he'd probably be fine. But yep. um, yeah, Richard, I I think will frustrate us again this year from taking for some some uh, some passing down work from Jacobs. Yeah, uh, and the Raiders that offense it could be interesting if they make some some moves here, you know, especially maybe if they draft a wide receiver, if they bring in an AJ Green, they've they're going to do they've something. Talked about Tom Brady, although I, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But they're going to um, do something. The Raiders uh, have to make a splash in Vegas. They have to. to. to they ha- their, you, you can't. You can't go in there and, and go six and ten. There. Yeah, no doubt. Last uh, bit of news: uh, Ian Rapport reporting that Greg Olson is expected to sign with the team by the end of the week. Now Olson announced an XFL game for Fox. Yeah, he was good on too. Sunday. He's definitely got a future in the booth, no question about that. But I mean, he's met with a bunch of teams. He's met with like the Redskins, and you know, you got the tie with Ron Rivera there. Uh, he uh, on Wednesday, uh, this is the Seahawks. Uh, he's visited with the Bills. Is there any? Uh, Greg Olson was one of the best and most reliable tight ends in fantasy football for a long time. Any interest in him, depending on where he goes? Like, say he goes to the Redskins. You know, Jordan Reed, who know Vernon Davis has retired. Right. I mean, any. I kind of like to see him with the Bills. Okay. Uh, Dawson Knox really struggled as a rookie, I thought, this past year. Uh, dropped a bunch of passes. Mm-hmm. I, I think Olsen would kind of be a nice veteran replacement for him uh, to give Josh Allen, like, one other safety blanket underneath. But yep. on that note, did you watch? Uh, did you guys watch any XFL you know, this weekend? I didn't because, like, we, there, again, there's when you're in a relationship, there's things that you, you, you give up. Uh, there's no way with football, <laughs> NFL football, gone, that my girlfriend would – she would kill me if, I, if I'm watching XFL. There's no – but I did do a draft. Okay. And Kristen Michael was my was my pick. Oh, boy. Second overall. And he sucked. <laughs> he, fu- he had a bad fumble. He stunk. So, yeah. Although I have Matt McGloin, who had a decent game. I don't even know who I get. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I thought so, too. It was a nice surprise. It, and I was glad that it had a lot of support from people in the media who were saying, like, this is fun to watch. It was, it was perfect. Um, you know, it, I think – It'll take some time for people to actually uh, to really support something outside of the NFL, mm-hmm. but to see something that's like you know, it, it's something you could definitely leave on. It's better than like a background noise. Like it, it's something you actually would watch, and it, it's like can't ask for anything more. I think they did a much better job with it this go around than they did the first time, and I think so too. Uh, and it's it's good for the, you know some guys that were in the league to give them a chance to play, and it's it's entertaining. Like I, I have no issues with it whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. PJ Walker, uh, Houston Roughnecks quarterback, man, he balled out uh, yeah. on. I guess it was whatever it was. I watched it on the flight Sunday, Saturday? No, Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was really good. Yeah. Christian Michael, seven carries for uh, zero I, yards. I know. <laughs> I think he had one catch. Yeah, he sucked, man. Like, uh, uh, that was that was a killer uh, That was a killer performance man, it, for, uh, in terms of killing my chances to win in week one. It was good to see uh, Lance Dunbar, too. Um, I know, the old cowboy, yeah, man. Lance Rams. Dunbar was a fantasy sleeper for, for so, years. So I got to look. I, I don't even know where the hell I can find stats for the XFL. I mean, I guess I go, if I go to the XFL yeah. – they have uh, uh, they have site. box scores up. I've got to put the they I've got to put a little up. research into that too because um we have to make some free agent moves. I'm thinking. I'd also forgotten that Joe Horn had a son and Joe Horn Jr. Yes. is playing yeah uh, in this league. Yeah, which is pretty cool. And isn't didn't I see Ricky Prohl's kid? Yes. Yep. Austin and he Prohl. had a good game, right? Yeah. Austin Prohl, he did. And yeah. I bet you he's he might be a free agent in this league. So we'll see. All right, guys, that's all you need to know. <laughs> That was
was the news. All right, so we're going to move on to free agency here. You know, I get it. The Combine is coming up, and Graham and I will talk about the Combine uh, in the next couple of weeks. But there's a lot of talk about the free agents. And so we're going to go through each of the positions, talk about some of the big names, maybe where they might end up, best destinations from a fantasy perspective. And we'll start with the quarterbacks. Uh, Dak Prescott is not going anywhere. Now, I know that there was this report yesterday. And one thing that I do, I, I, I believe about 50% of what I see online, and I don't believe any of what I read at all. And there was a report that Michael Irvin had said that there was some Cowboys, uh, you know, personnel who was talking about bringing in Tom Brady. I don't think yeah. that's. And then and then and then Irv went and said no, I didn't I didn't say that. Um but Dak, I don't know if he's going to get franchised or if the Cowboys are going to break the bank for him, but there's no question in my mind that he's going to end up with the Cowboys in 2020. That is not a bold prediction. And I feel like people because people like to crap on the Cowboys, they're really underestimating what Dak did, okay? Dak was the QB2 this year. He was a top five quarterback five times. He was a top 10 quarterback nine times. Nine. The only other quarterback who was in the top 10 more, Lamar Jackson. Uh, Dak was a top 15 quarterback 13 times. The only quarterback who had more such performances, Lamar Jackson. So Dak in Dallas with Mike McCarthy coming in, I mean... He, he could end up being a nice bargain in drafts. For sure. Uh, this is a, an am- – I mean, we're in an amazing spot for, for quarterbacks yes. in fantasy football, and it's just all the more reason to never draft him early. And we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about this all offseason with Lamar, and he'll yep. be a top 15 pick in every league. But Dak I'm- has been a consistent force in fantasy every single year. For four years now, he's finished as a QB1. That's top 12. Um, and this past year, we saw the, the Cowboys' offensive ceiling. We saw what they can be. It's just their defense was so, so bad. And yep. Uh, their their offense sort of faltered in some some tough spots late in the year, but yeah, Dak was fantastic, and um, I will be shocked, absolutely yeah. shocked, Fabs, if if the yeah. Cowboys don't get a big deal done with Dak. They just let Byron Jones walk their best corner, which um, they paid Zeke all that money last year. Somebody was going to be a casualty, and it was, turned out to be Byron Jones. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that'll work out for them, um, but yeah, Dak is going to get paid, and and I'm. You know, we'll talk about Cooper here in a minute, too. I'm sure yeah. he's going to get paid. As Cowboys well. need to focus on DBs, uh, maybe a safety in the first round of the draft coming up. Because, For sure. Uh, that is a position of need, a spot of need. Uh, Jameis Winston, who had maybe the, the most hectic fantasy season, if you owned him, of all time. He was either great or he absolutely killed you. Uh, threw for over 5,000 yards. Had thirty picks. <laughs> I mean, like that. Still, just, it's it's insane, man. And and I believe what was his last throw of the season to pick six. I mean, it was. And I know it's so fitting in it, overtime I too. For I think it was yeah. the first play from scrimmage in overtime. And then in uh, in a lot of people's championships, which I had him in two leagues, he buried me. Uh, he had an awful game against Houston. So, um, but Jameis, he still finished as a top ten fantasy quarterback. I mean, yeah, all the yards, all the touchdowns. It was the interceptions that killed him. Do you think he sticks in Tampa Bay? Because uh, here, here's the thing for me: like Tampa Bay is the perfect spot for him because of Bruce Arians, because of the offense. I don't even really con- do. Do you think any team, including the Buccaneers, believe that Jameis Winston can lead them to the promised land? There's no freaking way. Right. Not with all those turnovers. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, Bruce Aaron said it perfectly. Uh, at, I think it was right after week 17, or maybe we, um, right after the season ended. And um, he was asked, you know, if they could win with another quarterback. And he said, you know, oh, yeah, we can definitely win with another quarterback. Uh, we can win with Jameis, but we can definitely win with another one, too. <laughs> that was just like the yep. perfect way to describe Jameis's year because he had, you know, 10, 15 plays where you're like, yep. oh, my, oh, my God, Jameis is really freaking good. And then you had, you know, 10, 15 plays where you're like, Jameis is the worst quarterback in the NFL. And uh, and I'm going to mention this guy again, Phillip Rivers, who moved his family to Florida, right? That yeah. Was, I mean, so who knows? We'll see. I think Rivers will will end up on one of the Jacksonville teams, either the Bucks or the Jags. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's most likely. In that area, yeah. Um, yeah. Foles, too. Um, I, I don't know what the Jags are going to do with him. Uh, I don't know if they can get out with under, underneath this contract, but Nick Foles is another really interesting quarterback in this in this crop. It never ends. Yeah. Nick, Nick Foles, it never ends with that yeah. guy, man. No matter where he goes, um, it, it seems like teams are excited to have him for a hot minute and then ready to release him the next. We'll see uh, what happens with him. Drew Brees, uh, he, he had one of the greatest fantasy postseasons of any quarterback ever. 
Averaged 30 fantasy points in the postseason, so probably helped you win a championship. 30.4 to be exact. Uh, scored 21-plus fantasy points in all but one of his last six games in the fantasy season. So we're expecting him to stay in New Orleans, right? It, Breeze, Taysom Hill, and Teddy B are all free agents. They can't keep all of them. Yeah. I'm guessing they keep Breeze and Hill. Probably. Um, if if anything, Breeze is going to retire. I don't think he's going to play for another team. Right. Um, if he get if the if the Saints do elect to move on from him, uh, I think Breeze will be back. You know, he'll be he's 42. He's still got plenty of zip on the ball in between. Yep. You know, zero and 15, 20 plus yards downfield. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Hey, you know, I think I think I think we'll see one more year out of Breeze, and the Saints just continually like every single year. I know it's got to be just brutal to be a Saints fan. It's like. They're the same team every single I know. year, and they just keep coming up short. I really thought they were going to at least get to the NFC Championship. I thought game. so too. My uh, my NFL playoff challenge team just it, when when the Saints and the Ravens went oh. out, I was done. Yeah, I thought it would be Saints Ravens. Too. I was I was done. I was very very wrong. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Ryan Tannehill. Here's an interesting stat, and I'm going to be releasing uh, my consistency meter columns coming up this week. I'm going to start with quarterbacks, which I've already started to research. Ryan Tannehill. Didn't take over as the Titans starting quarterback until week seven. But he ranked as a top 10 quarterback in 80% of his starts. Lamar Jackson was also a top 10 quarterback in 80% of his starts. He started more games, obviously. But Ryan Tannehill was awesome, okay? And I talked about it on this show that he was playing at an MVP level for a time. And he got the Titans, you know, uh, two games into the playoffs. Didn't really put up huge numbers. But now we have to decide, well... The Titans, are they going to franchise him? Or are they going to go after Phillip Rivers? Or are they going to ink Tannehill to a big deal? Yeah. I, I well they they're in a really interesting spot because Derrick Henry's gonna want to get paid. He's he's, yes. he's gonna he's looking for Zeke money. Uh Zeke got forty million guaranteed last year. I will be surprised if Derrick Henry gets that much, but good luck. Yeah. Um they're gonna have to make a decision between Tannehill and Henry and what they want to do in terms of allocation. I think what's most likely is they tag Tannehill. Yeah, um, I think that's that's the path they'll take, and it's the smart path. Yep. Um, Tannehill's going to regress, though. Fabs. I mean, he <laughs> he threw a touchdown on seven point seven percent of his passes this past year. That was like top two or three in the NFL. Does that does that uh, mean bad so, news for AJ Brown? Yeah. Well, maybe prob- probably not for, uh, yeah. for Brown. He's such a freak after the, after the catch. But yep. Tannehill's touchdown rate is definitely going to regress this coming year because he was at like one of the best all time clips uh, this this past season. Yeah, I uh, had had posted my top five running backs for 2020, and Derrick Henry is sixth. And when I posted that, I got a response from from Derrick Henry with some little emojis, laughing and crying and stuff like that. Okay. Six is pretty good, but whatever. Um, but Tannehill's going to end up being a late run pick, uh, especially after what we saw. Now, the most interesting name on this list is Tom Brady. Uh, we had the whole, you know, cryptic message on social media, and then that just turned out, out to be a Hulu during the commercial. Super Bowl that it was a Hulu commercial, and it, it was good. I, I can't see him not being a Patriot. I mean, and, and we've seen reports that they're willing to pay him, you know, thirty million dollars a year for the next couple of years to to stay there. Uh, the Raiders have already expressed interest in Brady. If he doesn't go back, the Chargers would probably be in the mix as well. But, I mean, Brady's staying in New England, right? I think so, too. I think Belichick and, and Brady will will figure it out. They'll hash it out um, and, and give this one last ride. Um, look, Brady can't throw the ball like 35 yards down the field anymore, but yeah. he definitely has still got a lot of left in the tank, especially like just kind of being a field general and managing the game. Uh, the biggest thing I thought, the Patriots needed this past year with somebody to stretch the field because they, they, I mean, they just didn't have anybody. He was throwing inside the numbers to Edelman or, or just basically forcing the ball to the outside. I mean, yeah. losing Gronk as a field stretcher in the interior, not having anybody to stretch the field on the outside just really hamstrung this offense late in the season. And, and you know, Brady has certainly regressed and he's not uh, as near, as nearly as skilled as he once was, but, um, he's certainly not washed. I've, I've seen way too many people trying to insinuate that Brady was like one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL this past year. And that's, that's in my opinion, just was not the case. I've released my rankings way too early rankings uh, last week. I got Brady as the QB 21. Yeah, that's, that's about right. It's, it's amazing that Brady might not get drafted uh, in fantasy leagues in, in 2020 because he's been so good for so long, but that's sort Brady of had a couple nice games for fantasy to start the year. And, and then, then it went downhill. Yeah, he was, Useless. Hard. 
Yeah, yeah he, he was not good. Uh, we've talked about Philip Rivers already. There are any number of locations sort of in the southern part of the country that we, we, we could see him. Tennessee, uh, Tampa Bay, Jacksonville, probably not. Maybe we'll see what happens. But uh, Rivers is also in the mix. I have Rivers at 29 right now. I don't even know where he's going to end up. And he, he was not good in the second half of the season. By the way, I mean, Philip Rivers was the Chargers franchise quarterback for, what, 14, 15 years? Yeah. And they just were like, yeah, we're done. Later. I mean, I get it. Philip, sure, you probably felt like you underachieved for quite some time, especially in Rivers' prime. Mm-hmm. Um, but, man, I mean, he was so good for so long for that franchise for yep. them to just still be, like, you know, unceremoniously dumping him uh, mm-hmm. just through a Jay Glazer report was kind of mind-blowing to yeah. me. But, that's where we're at with the Chargers at this yeah, point. Yeah, Chargers, and, and they need to make a splash because they need to put butts in the seats there at SoFi Stadium uh, starting off here in 2020 because if they've got a quarterback under center who's not going to win them games, who's not – they better do better than Tyrod Taylor. Uh, their attendance is not going to be there. Some other guys, uh, we mentioned uh, Marcus Mariota is an unrestricted free agent, so is Teddy Bridgewater. Kyle Allen's a restricted free agent, and then Case Keenum is unrestricted. Uh, none of those guys likely to get a starting job, although Mariota, if he ends up in Chicago, could push – uh, our pal Mitch Trubisky. We'll yeah. see what happens. I, I think Chicago is like the ultimate wild card for this offseason because they yeah. could, I could see them doing... They're going to add somebody. Yeah, I could see them doing everything from like trading for Cam uh, to signing Nick Foles uh, to getting Phillip Rivers and just seeing if he's any better than Trubisky, mm-hmm. which he is. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, the Bears are, are, are the wild card for this, uh, for this free agency quarterback crop. Yep. Uh, moving on to the running backs and the biggest name, and there are a few here, Derrick Henry who is just coming off a spectacular second half of the season and postseason run. Um, Henry uh, did an interview uh, in recent weeks basically saying that Zeke Elliott's six-year $90 million contract is the floor (laughs) for what he's going to be asking for. Um, I don't know if the Titans are going to pay that. We'll see what happens. He is their offense, though, basically. Uh, Without Derrick Henry, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Henry has gotten a lot of work, though, and we all – that there used to be this curse of 370 back in the day where if a running back had 370 more carries than the following year they were at risk to go down uh due to injuries or just to see their statistics decline and regress henry is a guy that is coming off the board probably i would say eighth or ninth overall if you look at some of the mock drafts that are going on right now and i think that's probably where he'll go Henry, if you look at his numbers in the first half of the season, they're okay. They're not great. And then Tennessee, you see the strategy that they use. And and Maurice Jones Drew says this all the time. Once you get deeper into the season, into the colder months, that's when you want the guys who could pound the football. And Derrick Henry's a guy who could pound the football. If Henry remains with the Titans, do you see him as a first-round pick? I think he'll go in the late late first round. Um, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do on Henry this year. Um, I think he'll go late first round. I think one thing that people are kind of forgetting, though, about, you know, I know you just mentioned he got all these carries this past year, and sure, he he, he was coming off just a monster workload, especially late in the season. I mean, yep. he had 30 or more carries in three straight games to kind of propel the Titans th- on their run. Um, in his first two years, he kind of benefited from basically the Titans unwisely using him. He only had 280 carries right. in his first two they seasons. They had DeMarco Murray there for yeah. a little bit. Yeah, DeMarco Murray. Then they try to shoehorn him into some sort of committee with Deion Lewis in 2018. Um, and it, I think, you know, Keeping the wear off his tires those years will probably, you know, end up kind of extending his career. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, running back primes are typically right in this sweet spot, 26, 27 years old. Henry just turned 26. So I think he's got like two two years of just being able to, you know, compile and uh, bo- bottle up stats. And, I, again, I think I'll be really surprised to, to see if the Titans don't you know, extend, uh, get, get a contract extension done. Yeah, you would think Austin Eckler uh, is a restricted free agent. There's no way the Chargers are letting him go anywhere. And if you look at his numbers, I, in the first four weeks, while Melvin Gordon was holding out, he was averaging over 26 fantasy He was the RB1. Game. He was bananas good, okay? He was ridiculously good. Uh, averaged 26.7, uh, to be exact. He had 557 rushing yards and finished the season as the fourth best running back in fantasy football. Interesting note here for you trivia buffs out there. The only other running backs to finish in the top five in fantasy points among running backs with fewer rushing yards, Danny Woodhead, Terry Kirby, Albert Bentley, and Ernest Biner. That was in 1987. Assuming Gordon is out, and we can talk Gordon here too uh, because these guys are obviously linked, Gordon likely to be gone from Los Angeles. Eckler remains 
and I would think the Chargers bring someone else in unless they like Justin Jackson to be the number two. Eckler's a first-round pick, right? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, if Melvin Gordon is not back, uh, Austin Eckler is like maybe even top six or seven pick for mm-hmm. me. I, I mean, he was just fantastic. The biggest thing for, for us is obviously the receiving juice. I mean, even with Melvin Gordon uh, in the fray, and especially Melvin Gordon involved super uh, late, in the, late in the year this past year, uh, Eckler was just fantastic for fantasy. He caught four more balls in uh, his final six games, like average nearly six receptions per game yep. in that span. I mean, he, he was arguably one of the best receiving running backs we've seen in NFL history this past year. I mean, he was just such a weapon. And I see no reason for the Chargers to get away from that this coming year, regardless if Phillip Rivers is back or not. Melvin Gordon, as we mentioned, you know, Houston would be a nice spot for him. The Tampa Bucks Bay yeah. would be a nice spot for him. There's not a lot of teams out there that are going to pay a lot of money to a veteran running back. I believe he's going to be 27 years old uh, when next season starts. We'll see what happens, especially when you got some kids coming out of the draft this uh, this season too, and you've got a lot of good young running backs in the league as well. So Gordon could end up being a late first-round pick, early second-round pick, depending on where he lands, but uh, it's unlikely to be in Los Angeles. Kenyon Drake is very, very interesting. He was acquired by the Cardinals uh, in a trade from Miami during the course of the season. During his time with the Cardinals, he was the running back three. From weeks 9 to 17, he was the running back three. Okay, and Drake has always been interesting to us because Drake sort of broke out a few years ago in the second half of the season when the Dolphins had a bunch of injuries and he he was terrific. Then last year we saw regression because Frank Gore took half the workload and then we're coming into this year and suddenly because we're not sure about Kenyon Drake's ability to be a featured back, we're talking about Kalen Balaj and boy was that a mistake because he was friggin awful. And Drake goes to Arizona and goes bananas. Now, we have heard some rumors that David Johnson could end up being released. I don't know if that's going to happen. That, 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 that could hurt the Cardinals' salary cap situation. But if Drake ends up with the Cardinals as the top back, where are we looking at drafting him? I mean, he's a top 40 pick, right? Definitely. Yeah. Cardinals this year, they should be all in on trying to get Kyler Murray some more receivers because we know we they want to run four wide. They want to get some more guys. They did I, re-sign Larry Fitzgerald, but I mean, I right. think he's going to be more of a mentor to yeah. the younger guys than anything else. Yeah, he'll he'll you know he'll catch 50, 60 balls out of the slot once again because Larry Fitzgerald does not die. He's on that Frank Gore plan. For right. Us. Um, but yeah, Kenya Drake and and DJ are such an interesting tandem. Um, you mentioned the Cardinals cap situation. They would be eating a lot of money yep. if they release DJ. And I, I mean, maybe. I don't see anybody trading for that deal. It's kind of like the same conversation we just had with Todd Gurley. Is like I don't really see any team trading for that deal. DJ is also like two years older mm-hmm. than Gurley. Um, I, I don't know if the Cardinals can get a team to to bite the bullet on that. But but Drake was like perfect. He's a perfect fit for Cliff Kingsbury in this offense. You know he ran against a ton of light boxes. They love to run out of shotgun, and Drake has been a very good running back out of shotgun in his career, and even dating back to college, he was very good out of shotgun. Um, I think Drake's a perfect fit there, and I think it would make a lot of sense for the Cardinals to give him like a three-year deal with like fifteen million guaranteed. That makes it, some sense. And, and to me, I mean, he'd be a third or fourth round pick uh, if he ends up uh, staying with the Cardinals, um, especially if David Johnson is no longer in that backfield mix. They're in a really good position. I mean, they got Chase Edmonds too, who played pretty well. Yep. Yeah. No. No doubt. Uh, Kareem Hunt. Now, this one's interesting. Uh, he's a restricted free agent. Now, the fantasy world wants him out of Cleveland because Nick Chubb would be a top eight pick, no brainer, maybe a top six pick without Kareem Hunt in Cleveland. And assuming Hunt goes to another team, he'll be the featured back and we know how good he is. But Kareem Hunt is a knucklehead. Okay. Um, There is police video of Hunt uh, on a January 21st traffic stop, which was obtained by TMZ Sports, which is, you know, TMZ is, (laughs) you go to TMZ for all your news nowadays. Uh, and, And typically none of it's good. Hunt admitted, quote, He would fail an NFL drug test if one were administered to him at the time. So Kareem Hunt, uh, and and I understand what he was suspended for, uh, which is much more, which was much more grotesque, much worse than whatever it is that was in his system. But if Kareem Hunt can get his damn head screwed on straight, which obviously right now is not, um, he could end up being, and, and you guys may think I'm crazy, but he could end up being a top 20 pick. The, the off-field stuff is where you're worried, but if he ends up on the right team, this guy could just have a huge season. Yeah. For for Nick Chubb dynasty owners, though, they've got to be happy with uh, with Kareem Hunt struggling off yeah. the field. Um, Jimmy Haslam did say, you know, the Browns are open to bringing Hunt back, but that's only if he, like, follows the expectations for him, and he already 
broke those expectations. Yeah. So I'm not entirely sure what Jimmy Haslam and the Browns are going to do with Hunt. But, uh, but yeah, Nick Chubb, man, get him the ball. Especially give him a few more uh, passing down snaps if Hunt he killed is me out. In the second half of last season when, yeah. when Kareem Hunt took over. But that 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 look at look at those the first seven or eight games yeah. when, when Hunt was was gone. Nick Chubb is if he is the featured back, forget about it. Both, I mean, he, he's a top. The seven. craziest thing though is Chubb and Hunt were both top ten fantasy or top twelve fantasy running backs uh, together once once Hunt was made available for the Browns. Um, I know Chubb had two really bad games in the year, but I mean yep. he, re- he ran for like over ninety yards and almost just did, every game touchdowns Hunt back. just went right. down. He he went, I believe he had six but, without yeah. Hunt and then he had two with him. That that's what hurt uh, fantasy. I just players. think I think that that all, his Chubb's touchdown numbers from past this past year also have to do with the fact the Browns' offense was not good. Yeah, especially you know once they got past like the first you know couple drives of the game, it just seemed like the Browns were just you know, kind of just in, like, I don't know, holding pattern on mm-hmm. offense every single drive. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think Chubb is a fantastic pick. Uh, if he, you know, if you're doing, like, an early, early best ball draft and he's, like, I don't know, going 9, 10, 11, 12 overall, I'd be all over that. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, just some other guys. Lamar Miller is an unrestricted free agent, but he's coming off a torn ACL and MCL. Uh, unlikely to be back with Houston. Probably going to end up getting a backup gig. I don't know that Lamar Miller would earn a starting job anywhere. He'd be in a committee. Carlos Hyde, who replaced Lamar Miller, and it was actually pretty good. He was 12th in rushing yards among running backs uh, in 2019, but he's no lock to be back with Houston. And if he does, again, committee situation, Jordan Howard. Uh, he, quote, hopes to be back with the Eagles, but if he is, he would be a handcuff to Miles Sanders, who we are all going to love going into 2020, especially based on what we saw. And they also have Boston Scott in Philadelphia in that mix as well. Uh, Chris Thompson, who I mentioned earlier, is also an unrestricted free agent. Matt Breed is a restricted free agent. Gus Edwards, also a restricted free agent. Peyton Barber, unrestricted. Hopefully he is no longer in Tampa Bay. So maybe Ronald Jones could be the guy there or the Bucks go after a running back, which I think could end up being the, the, the scenario. And potentially David Johnson maybe reunites with Arians there in Tampa if the Cardinals do decide to let him go. Moving on to the wide receivers, and there's – you know, there's a couple of big names, and then it's kind of eh. Uh, the biggest name, of course, is going to be Amari Cooper. Uh, there's been talk that the Cowboys could franchise or transition him. Uh, we'll see what happens there. It depends on what happens with Dak Prescott. But, I, I mean, the Cowboys gave up a lot to get him. He's come into Dallas and played very well. He's become a very good fantasy wide receiver in Big D. He'll be 26 years old when the season starts. He's got to still end up being a Cowboy and a top 10 fantasy wide out, right? Oh, no doubt. Dallas didn't trade all those picks to get him uh, no. just to let him walk a couple years later. Cooper is going to be in Dallas, and um, yeah, no doubt. Uh, Fabs, real quick, where where do we? How do we feel about Michael Gallup going into this coming year? Because I feel like he is just on the precipice of like a massive breakout. No, I and and we started to see signs of it. You know, we we really did. He <laughs> that guy could stretch the field. Uh, it, he is he is an unbelievable playmaker. Now, I'm not saying he's going to reach the Amari Cooper zone because Cooper is up there, uh, maybe not among the elite, but he's on that second tier. But yeah, Michael Gallup was a guy that I was trying to get in all my drafts last season. At the end of the drafts, because people were not sort of, some people were on him. He wasn't he, he wasn't talked about enough where he was moving up drastically in drafts. Mm-hmm. But now he, he's an absolute playmaker and uh, uh, he, he could end up being, I feel like he, he still has a little bit higher ceiling than than what he finished I agree. with uh, in, in 2019. So, yeah, he, he's going to be an interesting uh, pick as well. Uh, I don't know where I have him ranked among wide receivers. And, again, I just produced uh, these these rankings. Uh, I just put these out, and I can actually take a look at it right now. But um, I've got Gallup. To me, he's probably going to end up draft, getting drafted as a wide receiver three. I have him 30th. I have him right in that Terry McLaurin, Debo Samuel. Yeah, that seems uh, right. That's where I have uh, Gallup right now. Um, A.J. Green is the, uh, another interesting option here because he didn't play this past season. He's dealt with those those ankle and toe injuries the last couple of years. Uh, 32 years old when the season starts, but he's going to get a lot of interest. Now, the Bengals are probably still going to be in the mix trying to keep him, but think about New England or maybe Oakland. Where would you think A.J. Green's best fantasy destination would be? Wouldn't it? I mean, I just would feel so bad for A.J. Green that the, the Bengals finally get a really good quarterback. Yeah. I think Joe Burrow is a very good quarterback, and uh, he ends up not being on the team. I, I, I Look, the Bengals, I, I don't know what they were doing this past year with A.J. Green. I mean, they're clearly uh, clearly were in tank mode, clearly were not going to go anywhere this past year, and they didn't do anything with A.J. Green. And maybe he, he was 
uh, his injury was a little worse than than was let on. I think that's certainly the case. But um, AJ Green, I hope will be back in Cincinnati this coming year because mm. if, if he's not, I mean Joe Burrow is going to be looking at you know like Tyler Boyd and uh, and on Tate as his top two receivers and. And that's not necessarily what we want for fantasy. Now, granted, the Bengals could certainly draft a receiver or pick one up in free agency. Uh, but I, I desperately want to see one year of A.J. Green and Joe Burrow together. Yeah, I've got Green 24th right now, wide receiver. Uh, so he's he's sort of a wide receiver too. But obviously there comes risk with the fact that he has uh, had some injury issues over the last few years. Emmanuel Sanders, who I believe is the first player in NFL history to play 17 games in a season because he got traded from Denver to San Francisco and – um, ended up in that situation. He looked really good at times. He didn't put up great numbers at other times. He was coming off the Achilles, sort of a, a medical miracle, this guy. Um, he's certainly open to returning to the 49ers, which is what he said, but Sanders' best fantasy destination would be? I mean, it's not uh, to me, it's not San Francisco because I love Debo. Yeah. I think Debo's just going to be tremendous. Sanders is, I mean, listen, there's... There's a lot of teams that could use a veteran guy, but he's also 32 years old. Um, this could end up being one of his final contracts that he that he signs in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, he proved that he's just a total medical freak by yep. coming off that Achilles tear and, and basically did not lose a step this past year. Maybe he slowed down a little bit at the end of the year, but that's just a little bit of him being you know 32 years old and playing a bunch of games this past year. I uh I think I think the 49ers will probably resign him. He's actually he's going to be 33 when the season starts too. By the yeah, way. okay. Uh, I think the 49ers will most likely re-sign him. Um, this this is something we'll talk about all offseason too, Fabs. It's like there are so many good wide receivers in the NFL, and we're about to get like five or six uh, you know, yeah. rookies that could make another fantasy impact this coming year. Mm-hmm. Uh, another really good rookie crop. Um, you know, I just fear that a lot of these kind of – not necessarily like lower-end veteran guys, because Sanders is not a lower-end veteran guy. I think like Randall Cobb is more of that, that stretch. But like yep. you know, guys like Sanders are going to kind of be forgotten about, especially if, if he moves on from the 49ers. Uh, some other guys who are on the list here, Brashad Perriman, who was – he was so good uh, once the Buccaneers lost Mike Evans and Chris Godwin to injuries. But clearly those guys will be back, so Perriman's value in fantasy. Probably of a, a late-round flyer. Randall Cobb, I think he's best served to stay with the Dallas Cowboys. We'll see if that is the case. Alan Lazard's a restricted free agent. Larry Fitzgerald has uh, signed a one-year contract with the Cardinals. Danny Amendola, uh, also an unrestricted free agent. And Zach Paschal uh, is under contract now with the Colts for another year. Real quick, Robbie Anderson to the Packers or the Eagles has to happen. This has to happen. Robbie Anderson is, like, that guy is another player that you absolutely love to hate. Yeah. Because if you look at his production, he averaged 7.3 fantasy points in weeks 1 to 11 and got dropped in a lot of leagues. He averaged nearly 17 points from weeks 12 to 16. Uh, in 2018, he averaged over 23 fantasy points in the fantasy playoffs. Uh, and that, that's despite the fact that he averages 8.2 points in the first 13 weeks. So, yeah, Robbie Anderson's another interesting guy. I, I don't want him to end up back with the Jets. I think the two destinations that you had mentioned, especially Green Bay, yeah. could be good for him. The Packers desperately need a field stretcher, and Robbie Anderson's like, he would be perfect for them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, and, and uh, again, I, I don't know that he'd, I don't even know that he'd want to remain with the Jets. I feel like they haven't utilized him. Why would anyone enough? want to play with Adam yeah, Gase? That's true. That's true. Seriously. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the tight ends here. Now, uh, th- there's two big names, yep. and uh, Austin Hooper is the biggest. Now, let's keep in mind, Austin Hooper was the top tight end in fantasy football before he got hurt. The top tight end in fantasy football. It wasn't Travis Kelsey. It wasn't George Kittle. It wasn't Zach Ertz. It wasn't Darren Waller. It wasn't Mark Andrews. It was Austin Hooper. And what I'm reading and what I'm hearing is, is that he's no luck to go back to Atlanta. I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that. Um, young player, still only 25 years old. He's going to turn 26 in the middle of next year. Uh, I would be very surprised to not see Hooper in a Falcons uniform this coming year. Because think about it, they're, they're top three receivers, Julio, Ridley, and Hooper. Like that's, that's an amazing trio. And, you know, Matt Ryan's not getting any younger mm-hmm. uh it, it would make a lot of sense for them to keep their supporting cast i have no idea what the, the falcons cap situation is but i i would be very surprised to not see austin hooper back in atlanta next yeah year. i mean falcons owner uh arthur blank had said quote i think he's worthy certainly of a new contract based on market whether that fits in with us and our salary cap remains yeah. to be seen falcons are bottom five in cap space they only have five million in cap space per over the cap which is not good imagine the madness that would ensue if Austin Hooper goes to New England, 
Well, I think they'll for a go, couple of years with I, Tom Brady. I think they'll go after Hunter Henry. Well, he's, Hunter Henry's the next guy we got to talk Hunter about. Hunter Henry's a better two way tight end. He's a better blocker than Hooper. Mm-hmm. Hooper's more of a receiver. Yeah. Hunter Henry can can play both ways. He's a top three or four, I think, two way tight end. Do you think the Chargers the let him too. let him get out of there though? I mean I, I don't young, know. Young player uh <laughs> has a ton of upside. You know, this franchise has long had great tight ends, you know, Antonio Gates, going back to Kellen Winslow. Uh, you know, Hunter Henry could end up being maybe not as good as those two guys, but but still pretty darn good. Right. If you can avoid injuries, he's had durability issues. I mean, he's a top five, six, seven tight end in fantasy. Yeah, if I'm Tom Telesco, Chargers GM, I'm not letting him walk, but predicting what the Chargers are going to yeah. do has been uh, yeah. been very difficult the last couple of years. It fast. has been, yeah. Um, I want to see him with the Patriots. I think that just be, it'd be perfect. Uh, they need a blocker. You know, the Patriots mm-hmm. love to run the ball, especially now with Brady getting older. Hunter Henry would basically be a six offensive lineman for them when they want to run. And uh, he proved this past year he can be moved in the slot and used as a wide receiver. He'd just be a perfect weapon there in New England. Think about that Chargers offense, though, just real quick. Rivers is gone. Gordon's gone. Eckler's a restricted free agent. There's no way they're letting him go. And Hunter Henry could be gone. Chargers have so much talent, and they just continually underachieve. Yeah. They are lo- they've been loaded. They were loaded last year. Now, granted, Derwin James' injury, that was just unlucky. Yeah. But they've just continually uh, disappointed us, Fabs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, some other tight ends who are going to be either unrestricted or restricted free agents coming up here in the next several weeks. Well, Eric Ebron's going to be back on the, uh, on the, tra- uh, or on the free agent market. Uh, Ebron had one monster season with the Colts, which was two years ago when he had – 14 or 15 touchdowns, uh, or was it more than that? I don't remember, but he had a monster season, um, and then this past season he was sort of eh, which means now Jack Doyle's going to see a little bit of an elevation in his value moving forward. Uh, Jason Witten's unrestricted free agent. He finishes the tight end 11. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, the guy's, in, the guy's in the TV booth one year. The next year, he's a top 11 fantasy tight end. Yeah. I mean, that's not saying much because the position no, sucked. I was just about to say, that goes to show just how bad that position Right. Was. I mean, it was terrible. Uh, but, I mean, Witten... And, I just I can't see Witten going anywhere but returning to the Cowboys and uh, I believe I believe Blake Jarwin's also a restricted free agent so the Cowboys maybe have some work to do at tight end Darren Fells is a restricted free agent Tyler Eifert is unrestricted uh, Jacob Hollister restricted free agent uh, that speaking of uh, Will Disley I, that's going to be interesting uh, Disley he's coming off another major I know I know but that guy was bananas good when uh, when he was healthy and uh, Hollister likely to be retained by the Seahawks I would think uh, especially as insurance because Disley has been just so uh, so prone to injuries, but not a lot of great tight ends available except for Hooper and Henry. After that, there's a it, uh, a drop in the in the in the level of talent. Hooper and Henry are about to get paid too, because outside of like maybe one or two tight ends, I'm interested in this tight end rookie class is not very good. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. not very good. Yep. So I mean, if you know the Patriots, Chargers, uh, Cowboys need a tight end too. I know they they love Jason Witten, uh, but yeah, those two guys are going to get paid this offseason. Yeah, and and I think that the position. Is getting deeper. Ebron might get paid too, man. I think people will be surprised that Ebron will get some interest. No, he will. Yeah, he, he definitely will, no doubt. But I, I feel like this position is getting younger. It's getting better from a fantasy perspective. We're seeing George Kittle has proven himself to be an elite player. Mark Andrews, uh, Darren Waller. And then if you go a little bit further down, TJ Hawkinson should take the next step. Noah Fant should take the next step. Uh, I mean, Chase Sternberger in Green Bay, right? I mean, yes. Jimmy Graham, I don't know what's going to happen with him. Uh, I know he's he's not really good at football anymore at this point. So there, the, the tight end position is getting younger. Hopefully it's going to get deeper and a little bit better uh, from a fantasy perspective. So that's that's the the glut of the big name free agents. I didn't get into kickers. Sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, we're not going to go that deep. But this is going to end up being one of the most interesting free agent periods like ever because of the names involved. There's some players like Todd Gurley, for example, like maybe David Johnson, who could end up being on the market at some point here in the next few weeks once teams start making their moves. Um, and, and just so you guys are aware... Uh, and I'm going to look this up right now. Uh, free agency is going to begin in March, and that would, I believe it's the middle of March. I think it's the 17th. Um, the NFL teams can use franchise and transition tags February 25th through March 10th. They can start negotiating with free agents on the 16th of March, and then March 18th at 4 p.m. Eastern is, is when free agency begins, and so that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it should be, you know, this quarterback – the quarterback carousel is going to be really fun this mm-hmm. year. It's going yeah. to be really, really fun. Lots of uh, big name players potentially changing, uh, changing jerseys, and 
yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. It, I remember when the NFL, there was never any free agent moves, no big moves, no big trades, Completely anything changed. like that. And then when Clinton Portis got traded for Champ Bailey, it kind of all it kind of all changed. And now we could end up seeing trades. It's a lot of fun. The NFL is a 365-day-a-year uh, event, uh, and that's why fantasy football is so big because everyone's all over it. So next week, uh, Graham and I are going to be back, and we're going to talk – Probably about the combine. I might try to get Mike Tannenbaum in here uh, to discuss some of the big prospects and, and sort of what fantasy owners really need to watch at the combine. Because I get it, like the com- it's it's hard to gauge value from a fantasy perspective at the combine. A guy is fast. Okay, great. You know what I mean? Like a guy is strong. Okay. You know, Samaj P. Ryan was 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 bench pressing more than offensive linemen. Look where it ended up. He didn't do anything in the league. So uh, hopefully we can get some insight. From someone like that, uh, so we'll be back next week. Graham and I, Marcus is still going to be off until March, enjoying a little rest and relaxation with his uh, with his young son, Eddie. Anything uh, anything to add here before we before we get going, pal? Oh, that was the that was a pretty thorough uh, free agent review or preview, rather. Uh, you guys uh, did a heck of a job there. We're trying. I, I mean, it's not the Oscars or anything, you know, but. I will say that I, I am I am a uh, a big draft. I love college football, so uh, yeah. going into the combine and then the draft season has me very excited. It's one of my favorite events in, in sports, uh, especially after here. you got your picture taken with Daniel Jones last year. Yeah, we're friends now. You guys are buddies. <laughs> you guys are DMing each other or whatever. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. close friends. Is that yeah. what it is. Give him some tips here and there. He listens, so that's good. He, yeah. he he's going to end up being a big sleeper in fantasy. I I don't want to jinx anything. He's going to end up being a big be sleeper in fantasy. Eddie, what are you telling him about his fumbling issue? You need to help him out with that, man. I think get him uh, on the phone with Tom Coughlin or Tiki Barber. Do I I just I just Not Tom Coughlin. I just trust him. <laughs> Better O line coaching and maybe some extra O line pieces, I think, will uh, uh, help that. But I also think that, I, I mean, there were reports, I'm sure you guys saw that he's already working out at Duke uh, yeah. with Sterling Shepard and someone else. He's been there like it was days ago. So, I mean, that, that's awesome. That's what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. You know what, for me, baseball season's coming. Also true. Pitchers yes. and catchers, buddy. Pitchers and catchers. All right. Uh, that's all for us for this week. Graham, great job. As always, we will be back next week. Start talking about some of these rookie prospects that you're going to want to be looking at for your 2020 fantasy drafts. We'll see you next week.